Catfish is a US TV show where the host investigates stories sent in by viewers where they believe they're being lied to about online relationships. It usually ends up 95% of the time with the person that they thought they were speaking to not actually being that person and being someone else. Now, what has all that got to do with Flat Earth Friday? Well, you're about to find out. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, another quick reminder about the Simon Dan podcast channel. This last week we interviewed a moon landing denier who brought forward five pictures which he thought proved we didn't go. I'll leave the link for that episode in the description. It really is one that you cannot miss. Right, on with the show and some of you might be wondering what it's all about. Well, how many of you here remember this guy? The first huge problem I want to discuss about the lunar lander is the fact that it was never flown on Earth. Not even once. And why would a full lunar landing practice be done here on Earth? Well, good old taboo conspiracy is so desperate to confirm his flat Earth beliefs that he will believe any old Tom, Dick or Harry that emails him. Now it all started when taboo conspiracy first released this video. I received an email from a retired F-16 pilot whose name is Mike. His new YouTube name is F.E. Viper 16. A good name, so watch for him in the comments. I spoke to Mike on the phone today, but he wishes to remain anonymous and I will certainly honor that. Again, if you are a professional and would like to talk to me about the unique perspective of the Flat Earth related to your expertise, please email me at tabooconspiracy at gmail.com. Opening up the doors, Taboo opening up the doors. I wish I could share my full discussion with Mike because it was awesome as this retired Air Force pilot confirmed that he definitely flew over a flat and stationary Earth and that none of the systems of his aircraft were designed with the curvature in mind. Now I might make some mistakes here and I do apologize for that as the information was complex for me but Mike did say that he might stick around and answer your legitimate questions in the comment section. An F-16 can fly up to 1,500 miles per hour and may be intercepting another craft flying in the opposite direction at the same or a different altitude at similar speeds. Breaking it down, 1,500 miles per hour is 250 miles in just 10 minutes. As Mike discovered, the paramount problem with the globe is 8 inches per mile squared. Okay, as we've already discussed, over very large distances, this formula breaks down. It gives us a parabola. The infamous and quite accurate formula that calculates the alleged curvature drop if the globe were real. That easy to understand formula absolutely destroys the globe because no one has seen or accounts for that insane amount of curvature drop ever. But for an F-16 flying at 1,500 miles per hour, that would be a curvature adjustment of approximately 42,000 feet in just 10 minutes. Apart from the fact that that's not how you use a curve calculator. Why oh why would you believe someone, some random stranger that contacts you? Oh, I know why, because it confirms your fallacious beliefs. But no pilot makes that ridiculous curvature adjustment. But think about the problem when an F-16 is quickly intercepting another aircraft coming from the other direction. Consider the unbelievable amount of curvature adjustments that would be necessary for an Air Force pilot on intercept. And yet, Air Force pilots never learned about the curvature drop in training or otherwise, as confirmed by Mike. That's because they're not flying or engaging over a beach ball. It's a globe, a sphere with a 40,000 kilometer circumference. Anyway, this video gave full-time professional pilot and flat earth debunker Wolfie an idea. He was going to catfish Taboo Conspiracy to see just how easy it was to feed him bogus information that confirms his flat earth belief. I'll let Wolfie set this one up. Away you go, buddy. Thanks, Dan. I'm going to talk about an experiment I conducted a while ago just to demonstrate how gullible flat earthers can be when it comes to aviation and claims made by alleged flat earth pilots. 
Now this is one of the reasons I first became involved in Flat Earth and decided to make videos debunking their claims. It was due to the amount of nonsense that I saw on their channels relating to pilots, aircraft and flight paths in general. And we all appreciate your efforts, matey. So let's get a few things straight. Pilots are trained to fly over a globe Earth. Flight planning is based on a globe Earth. Navigation is based on a globe Earth. And the aircraft corrects for curvature during flight. And I demonstrated that in a real aircraft in one of my recent videos. While it was following a great circle path, it was making constant corrections to the true course turning towards the equator. Those corrections were due to the curvature of the Earth. Okay, so confirmation from an actual pilot that the curvature of the Earth is taken into account. Wolfie moves on to what usually happens when he tries to get flat Earth pilots to converse with him. Now, over the years, I had a number of flat Earthers turn up on this channel in the comments claiming to be pilots. And once again, as soon as I started talking shop with them, they turned and ran. In some cases, hurling insults behind them. As I said, it is very easy for me to spot a fraud. And that is why I don't seem to get many of them turning up these days. On this channel, I have exposed a number of these flat earth pilots as frauds. And one example is Bob Nodell here of Globebusters. A 15 degree per hour drift. Thanks, Bob. Couldn't resist. And a more recent example was on Taboo Conspiracy's channel in relation to an alleged F-16 pilot. Now, when I watched that video, I immediately noted a number of inconsistencies that told me that this was not a real pilot. And on Taboo Conspiracy's channel, I engaged this person directly, asking him very simple questions that any real fighter pilot would know. He lit the afterburners and fled, never to return. So even though this F-16 pilot was another obvious fraud, the Flat Earthers just accepted him without any verification at all. Okay, we've set this up well, now let's get to the juicy stuff. And I posted a comment on Taboo Conspiracy's channel in relation to this, telling him that I was going to fake a Flat Earth pilot just to prove how gullible Flat Earthers were. Unfortunately, he deleted that comment and his channel is now gone but I posted a similar comment on Sleeping Warriors channel in relation to this F-16 pilot. Okay, so Wolfie warns Taboo Conspiracy and Sleeping Warrior, who mirrored the original F-16 video, that he was gonna catfish them. Watch what happens next. So a short time after this, my brother Mark assisted in the experiment by sending Taboo Conspiracy several emails claiming to be Steve an ex-Qantas pilot, claiming that the flight planning department used algorithms to convert flat earth data to a globe. We made a point of including absolute nonsense in the emails that would make it easy to recognize we were not legitimate. Here is an example. So here is a scene from the TV series, I Dream of Genie, referencing cryptactic light sequentials. Now we chose this specifically because if you Google Creptactic, it brings up this clip. Creptactic Light Sequentials. Let's listen to it. So cryptactic light sequentials are complete nonsense. There is no such thing. And in our emails to Taboo Conspiracy, we told him that the algorithm was called cryptactic flight sequentials. But as a giveaway clue, we used KLS Steve as the YouTube channel. And he missed it completely. And so did his followers. Didn't they just? Because this is what Taboo Conspiracy did next. Hello everyone. Today I have some fascinating whistleblower information about how they continue to fake the globe. In particular, this information will describe how flight plans are systematically altered 
from flat maps to appear as though the flight plans were developed for a globe. The emails I'm going to share were provided anonymously by an individual who goes by the name Stephen. Wolf in sheep's clothing. But I will be upfront and let you know that I have rearranged some of the paragraphs and sentences so that it makes more sense, as it was a series of emails, and I also redacted some information regarding an ill-mannered globe troll who may or may not work for the Australian Security Intelligence Organization. Again, if you are a globe skeptic and have inside information regarding our flat earth, please email me at tabooconspiracy at gmail.com. Anyways, let's get to the emails from Stephen. I have been a quiet follower of your channel and have seen the drama over your recent video. Let me tell you about myself. I joined the Royal Australian Air Force in 1987 and flew transport aircraft, Hercules C-130H, for six years. After this, I joined Qantas and was the second officer on the 747-400, being promoted to first officer in 1999. Unfortunately, I lost my air crew medical status due to early onset diabetes. I was then offered a position in the flight planning department. This is when my life changed. We were responsible for producing the flight plans for the entire airline network. The program we use for flight planning uses algorithms called cryptactic flight sequentials. And there's the money shot. And it was clear these were converting plane geometry to make it appear as if the coordinates were on a globe. When I questioned my co-workers, the answer I received repeatedly was, don't ask, just approve the plan. I knew something was not right, but who was I to question Qantas flight planning, so I did my job and never asked again. The best I understand is that KLS algorithm applies a scaling factor to distances based on the direction and proximity to the equator. Taken from the UTM grid, which is rectangular for a flat plane, the adjustment will generate a course and a distance that makes it appear to be produced for a globe. The UTM is the universal transverse Mercator grid, which is used by the military. Hook, line, and sinker. Now, Taboo Conspiracy continues to read the rest of the email, but it's more of the same, completely believing all of the stuff that's being fed to him. The story isn't finished yet, though. Far from it. Some other flat earther bunkers wanted a piece of this as well. Q, Bob the Science Guy. Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, I was really pleased the other day when Simon Dan asked me to make a contribution to his upcoming video about a little catfishing we did of the flat earth last summer. Now, shortly after Wolfie did his Qantas Navigator video, I went ahead and contacted Taboo Conspiracy as well and I had a real bit of insider information for him. Let's have a look at the emails. Now, in order to pull off this little flight of fantasy, I had to create an imaginary friend by the name of Jake Smith. And I went ahead and I wrote a quick note to Taboo Conspiracy. And in my note, I used the Letters to Penthouse Forum format. Hello, I don't follow your channel on a regular basis, but your last video here hit me pretty hard. And then I proceeded to tell Taboo Conspiracy about Ballistic Targeting Skew Guidance, or BTSG. Now, I chose the name Ballistic Targeting Skew Guidance because BTSG is the same initials as Bob the Science Guy. And I made this up out of whole cloth. I wrote it up and sent it over to Taboo Conspiracy. Let's see what he had to say about it. Thank you for sharing. Do you mind if I share this information? Is there anything else you'd like me to add? Then to play into his conspiratorial mindset, I said, well, you've got to keep it on the lowdown because I'm afraid that the Illuminati and reptilian overlords might discover my identity if you inadvertently put out a little bit of information that they can trace back to me. But then he goes on to talk about this wolfy person that thinks he knows who the Qantas person is. But then I go on to say that I really don't know who this wolfy person is, but Taboo describes him as a semi-famous globe shill who likes to attack everyone in the comments. Ha! Ah, well, God knows I wouldn't want Wolf trying to figure out who I was. But I go on to say that if he does start asking some questions, just let me know. I'll decide if I want to answer them or not. And then he, he's really getting excited about this. He's got a thumbnail for it and everything else. Now, he tries to talk about ballistic missile systems, but I really want to make sure that he's got ballistic targeting skew guidance in there because it's Bob the Science Guy. So I give him a little more information. And then he goes out and he makes the video. And unfortunately, 
when you go to that URL, apparently his YouTube account is now gone. Boy, that guy goes through YouTube accounts like I change socks. Then finally, I want to see how it turns out before I give him any more information because I've got something else to talk to him about. Then apparently I became an expert to him because he would send me other information that he got from some of his other whistleblowers. And I, of course, gave them glowing reviews. So whether he made videos on those, I don't know. Amazing, Bob. Just amazing. Thank you for that. But we still aren't done here. I'll let Wolfie's fellow countryman and friend of the channel, Where's Wally, to explain more. Well, hello everybody, where's Wally here? Look, it seems like it's my turn. Thank you very much, Wolfie, and thank you, Dr. Bob, and a particular thank you to Simon Dan. Well, Wolfie, he managed to trick Taboo's conspiracy, as did Dr. Bob. So Hugh Jars, the youngest of the wolf puppers, he decided he'd have a go, but he took a bit of a different track, and, well, he told the truth, and Taboo didn't buy it. Here, I'll let you tell you. This is Huge Ass, and I've been a naughty boy. I've been playing with the flirts. That doesn't sound right. This is Taboo Conspiracy. Now, if we just go to his videos, you'll see that he's released two videos in the last couple of days. This video here is based on information sent to him by Wolfie6020. It is completely fake. This one here about ballistic missile and targeting, that was sent by Bob the Science Guy. Again, it's completely fake, yet he put it up uncritically. I've been a naughty boy too. If we go to my sent folder, you can see that I sent him this email. I'm hoping the taboo conspiracy will respond to me and we'll see what he says. And it will show to the flurfs that they are so easily fooled and hopefully a few of them will wake up to themselves and realize that they're being fooled Com men. Well done, Hugh. I was a little bit slow. The whistleblower video disappeared rather quickly once Taboo finally dropped to the red flags, but there were plenty of people telling him that this was all a big con job. It took him a little while to figure it out. Well, he is a flat earther, Wally. What did you expect? I did manage to get these couple. The upshot of all this testing was that Taboo Conspiracy totally bought the fake email twice. And then the one and only sleeping warrior mirrored Taboo's fail video with FE Viper 16 and he added fail all of his own to it. So Anthony, he even failed more by refusing to take down the video long after Taboo Conspiracy took it down when he realised he'd been had. And of course the other great fail was Flat Earth Banjo. So Flat Earth Banjo, he has taken cryptactic flight sequentials literally. And he's made it part of his own mantra now. Isn't that great for him? But of course, it's total rubbish. Isn't it amazing how these flat earthers just take anything and run with it? Finally, and I do love doing this, this is a list of the Attaboys to Taboo's original video. Now, these are all the backslappers and all those who didn't check it out but blindly swallowed the bait. Hook, line, sinker, rod and boat. Good on you guys for double checking and being scientific. Not. Brandon Toy, you're going down. Don't sphere the truth. Banjo, wide awake. You're going down. Brian's Logic, you're going down too, mate. Oh, Nathan Oakley and Cosmic Surfer, there's some big ones. Critical Truther, you're going down. Oh, Quantum Eraser, gee, that's got to leave a mark. Oh, no fanfare. Well, of course, he's going to be a joke. James Mann, Orphan Red and Dim Dim. Oh, there's a three in one right there. Brilliant. So as you can see, a lot of flat earthers jumped on this. Well, I think it's quite obvious to me that Taboo Conspiracy loves an email or two. But I wanted to know if he'd learnt his lesson. So I emailed him. Now, this is from uh, someone who I named Hoagie Tablers. And I said, hi there. I have some interesting results from some solar observations that I think you should know about. They are quite conclusive in terms of the nature of the sun's movement above the flat earth. I've tried reaching out to Ranty, but didn't get a reply. Please let me know if you want to discuss further. Best, Abel. And Taboo Conspiracy replied. He said, yes, I am interested. Please let me know what you discovered, Ben. Hoagie goes on. Hi, Ben. 
Excellent. I've made a series of observations over the last few months which show a definitive angular size reduction during the setting sun. In my view, it is absolute proof that the sun rotates above us. Would you like to see the observations? Best able. Taboo Conspiracy replies again. Yes, I would. I did a series on that with my first channel. I no longer have these videos, unfortunately. BMLSB69 and Chris Van Metra both have good videos on the topic as well. Looking forward to it. Ben. As you can see, Taboo Conspiracy is still desperate for info. But what's funny is, the email account that he was responding to, which I created for this conversation, is an anagram of Earth is a globe. Well, there we go, what a great story, and one which shows just how far flat earthers will go to try and share these proofs. Thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, then please do smash the like button. Uh, subscribe as well if the feeling takes you. I have been Simon and Dan. Have yourselves a great weekend, and I'll see you all on Tuesday for more tinfoil fun. See you then.